What's up, new pirate population? We're going to continue on with our time value of money series. That's going to kind of lead up to the beginning of our intermediate accounting one, where we'll talk about the asset side of the balance sheet. Should just say that if you haven't checked out NoPirate.com, you should because, of course, you can ask questions there, discuss any finance or accounting. We're also adding English and grammar leading up to uh, GMAT verbal, so you can check that out. Let's go ahead and continue on with our time value of money series. We're going to be talking about compound interest, but before that, I just wanted to summarize what we were talking about last time. So, last time we were seeing how we can find the present value of future cash flows or we can find the future value of a present cash flow. So in the first case, we were looking at how we can look at $100 as a future cash flow and then discount that back, or discounting is essentially finding the present value using the rate of return or discount rate or risk-free rate, and we found what $100 was worth essentially today. The second situation was we found what $100 was worth in the future, hence present and future value. And this is really important because, of course, in the first case, uh, we can essentially, well, let's just say for one example, everyone kind of knows what like an RSP or I, I guess probably not because, of course, some US viewers, well, either way, it's a retirement savings fund and you can normally uh, convert it into an annuity. So something a fund that pays out cash over the course span of 20 years. Maybe you want to find what the present value or today's value of that of that annuity or retirement fund is. So this would essentially aid you with finding out the value. Uh, second example is if we have an investment and we want to find out how much it will be worth in the future, maybe in two years, in three years, in four years, we can find that using the future value equation. So two examples where we show you that this isn't just theory, we can actually apply it in everyday life, which is important. Let's move on. So last time we were only looking at a horizon of essentially one year. And we want, in this case, to look past just that one year of earning interest. We wanna look at earning interest in two years and three years and so on. So. First up, uh, we're going to be taking out a loan, or we're not taking out a loan, I should say, we're investing with Jimmy on the corner, and he's going to be giving us a 5% a five percent interest rate. Let me just quickly make a new layer. So he's giving us a 5% interest rate, and we're having $100 to invest. That's what this blue bar is. This is our capital that we're investing before. And in one year, it's going to grow to actually have $5 of interest. So as you can see here, we're earning interest on that capital. We're actually earning $5 because 5% of 100 is $5. And we'll also get our capital back. So that's what Jimmy is offering. Uh, pretty generous guy but we could obviously be doing a little bit better as we'll see in the second situation I'm just gonna move Jimmy over a bit he's taken up uh, a large part of the screen with his with his uh, hair in his corner and his well everything about him is just taking up too much on the screen so the second group is this is after the first year so we're gonna have the interest we've already accumulated and we're also going to be investing at the same rate of 5%. But the thing is, he's only going to be offering you interest on your capital, once again, not on the interest that you've accumulated. So this is after the one year. And the second instance, we're going to have the same amount of interest because we're in one year, we'll have uh, the, the money that we've contributed back, but we'll also earn another $5 because we're earning 5% on this $100 yet again. So after two years, we have the $5 that we earned in the first year and $5 that we've earned in the second year. And then we get our capital back, which is $100. And in total, we've netted $110 for our return. And this, just earning interest on our capital and not on, not earning interest on interest is known as simple interest. 
and when we earn interest on accumulated interest or interest that we've earned it's known as compound interest which we're going to see in the next part and if you just wanted to figure out how much interest we've earned you can just multiply the amount that we've loaned times the rate times the period of time so in this case it, this was a hundred this was five percent sorry if my numbers are a little bit small and two so in this case it netted us ten dollars of interest so you can use that equation to find out the amount of interest that we've earned and then you just add back the hundred dollars so let's say we move to a bank instead of working with Jimmy on the corner <laughs> I've kind of put on an accent there accidentally um, and let me just get rid of him and we're going to the bank now and we're going to be investing the same amount of money what's going to be different well we're going to have compound interest in this situation so we're investing $100 again at the rate of 5% so we're going to be getting our capital back in one year but we're also going to be getting the 5% interest so we're earning interest on that capital so in this case nothing has changed in the first year it's the same in the first year we've got our we've got our hundred dollars back and our five dollars of interest but in the second year things are going to change so we're going to have our initial capital plus the interest that we've accumulated and we're going to be this time earning interest on the interest we've accumulated plus the capital so we're going to be doing 105 times uh, 1.05 which is essentially the, the capital plus the interest rate you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second essentially but in the second year so this is the first year first year and in the second year we're going to be earning a little bit more because of course we have more initial cash to earn interest on so this is going to actually be five dollars and 25 cents this will be five dollars and that will be one hundred dollars so in this case we've entirely earned a hundred and ten dollars and 25 cents so 25 cents more than our simple interest method and we can find out the future value by using the equation that we learned in the last video which is future value is equal to present value times 1 plus r to the power of t and I said I would go over what actually t represents and it's the number of periods and the reason why we're using an exponent is because if I were to write it out we initially started out with a hundred dollars and then we multiplied it by 1.05 in the first year to get the amount of cash we'd be left with. So that's after the first year, we have $105. In the second year, we do the same, but we're going to multiply it one more time by 1.05. And we know whenever we multiply something by itself, it's going to be to the square or to the power of 2 so it's gonna look like this 100 times 1 1.05 to the power of 2 because they are multiplying by each other and if we did three years then it would be to the power of 3 and if we did four years it would be to the power of 4 so you can see the exponent changes based on how many times it uh, multiplies by itself so that is the logic as to why there's an exponent there and why compound interest is exponential in nature because we're earning interest on our interest. And one last thing that I wanted to go through is that I just wanted to show the difference graphically between, between simple interest and compound interest. So let me just quickly draw a graph and I'm gonna put the amount of interest we've earned on the y-axis and put the, the time or number of years on the x-axis. So these are the number of years. I'm just putting a little couple hash marks. And for simple interest, it's gonna be the same 
each year. So we're going to be receiving, in the first example, we're going to be receiving $5 a year. But for compound interest, it's going to start at the same points, because you saw in the first example it was the same, but it's slowly going to break away from simple interest, and we're going to earn more money each year because we're earning interest on interest. So this, this part right here is the difference between simple and compound interest. So this is the simple interest, and this is compound interest. So as we can see, there's two things that we've kind of gone over in this video. We know that compound interest creates more interest for us than simple. And we've also learned why we use this equation to find the future value of an investment. So hopefully you understand that now. And we can move on to looking at scattered cash flows in the next time value of money video. So I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate. You can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.